Hello friends and welcome to A Shot of Code. Today we're looking at service workers and how they can make our application work offline, i.e. no more dinosaur game in Chrome or the simple cannot reach this page in, uh, in your more boring browser. Um, we'll start by creating a page without a service worker so we can show the dinosaur uh, and then add our service worker to cache the index.html page so that even without an internet connection, which we can simulate uh, in the dev tools, um, we can still access the page. Um, so this gives us a much more native application feel uh, and is why service workers are part of the requirement for your application to be considered a PWA or progressive web application. Support for service workers is excellent as of today with all evergreen browsers providing support. Uh, obviously I level and below don't support this, but this is a progressive enhancement so they will simply Simply fall back to the existing error page being displayed. All right, I've got Visual Studio Code open. Let's let's jump in and have a look at an example. Okay, so we've got Visual Studio here. Let's um, create a uh, very simple index.html um, to show the case where we haven't got a service worker. Um, so if I create this here and just put a header in and say service worker demo. Then if we start that up, okay, so we've got a page here with service worker demo. When I refresh, that is all fine and good. Um, but then if I come into the network and say we're offline and then do refresh, then we get our friend the dinosaur now. Oh, here we go. Oh. Am I back online, am I? Network offline. And refresh. Ah, here we go. So, and we can play a dinosaur if we want. I'm just gonna do one jump over here. Uh, there you go, and go. Um, okay, so, uh, now Service Worker allows us to no longer have this problem. Even without an internet connection, we can still get to the page um, because it will cache it for us. So let's have a look at how we go about that. Uh, if I come back into the Visual Studio code here and what we'll need is to create um, a script here to register our service worker. We haven't created the service worker yet, but this is how we uh, register it. So um, first thing we wanna say is, is this um, browser capable of using service worker? Um, and like we say, most browsers are these days. Um, so if we've got service worker, then we can say uh, navigator service worker dot register and put our file in there. Uh, and that returns a promise with some results of um, the registration. And we can simply do a console dot log of that. Okay, so that's what we need in our um, our page that gets downloaded to the browser. Now let's create the um, the service worker itself. So we have a file called serviceworker.js. Now we can hook into various events um, from within the service worker. So we can um, hook into the fetch event and override what it's going to do. Um, but the first thing we want is to override a service worker specific event called install. So let's do self.add event listener and we're going to add an event uh, listener for the install event. And in there, what we want to do is cache our index.html um, so that when we request this and there's no network, we can pull it out from the cache. So we can simply say const cache equals caches.open um, and that will create a nice new uh, cache for us. So let's do service worker demo cache um, and we'll do this with async await. So if I come up here and put that in um, and then I can simply call cache and add and we'll add uh, the root and we'll add um, index.html. Okay, that should cover us um, running locally and running uh, in production. 
Uh, not that this is production ready current. Uh, okay, so that's the install event, and that should get us um, into the cache. So let's um, let's just run that for the moment and see what it does for us. If I bring this up and let's okay, so we are running now. Let's have the network back because we need to get our page down again. Um, and we'll have the console open this time. So if I do a refresh now, we can see our page is back because we've got an internet connection. And we can see this service worker registration, which is what we're putting out here in the console.log um, of our register promise resolution. Um, so that's just some details about our service worker and it looks as though it's successful. There's a problem registering it, you'll see an error in there. Now, if we come into the application tag, not only can we see our service worker here um, and some various options there, but we can also see down in the cache, we've got a service worker demo. Uh, let me just get rid of that one from the previous. Um, so this SW demo, if I go back to our service worker, just make that a little bit bigger there. Um, so we opened this one here, Service Worker Demo, and we added these two files, and there they are in our cache. Now, that's great, they're in the cache, but if I turn the network off and do a refresh, we're still getting the dinosaur, because we need to um, pull these out explicitly ourselves. We've got a lot of control in the Service Worker here. So let me just pull that down again there. And if we come back into our service worker and add an event now for um, the fetch event, so we're saying when we when the browser does a fetch for index.html, we want to pull this out of the cache um, in, in this situation. So we get past an event in here, and we can say event.respond with and we actually need to pass another function in here. Um, and we'll actually um, immediately execute that as well. So it's a little bit uh, convoluted, this bit. Um, but there's, there's good examples online of this sort of code and I'll provide a, a link in the description. Um, so once we've got this function here, we can say, um, similar to above, we'll open the cache. So const cache equals await um, caches.open and it's SW demo. And then with our cache, we can say uh, const match equals cache.match. Now what we're trying to match is the request that's coming in and one of the items in our cache. So we're trying to match the event.request, which will be, um, in our case, for index.html. So if that does match, if we've got a match, we can simply return that match, which is our cached content. Just bring this down a little bit so we can see it all a bit better again. Um, and get rid of that. Um, and then if we didn't find a match, then we can simply return um, the normal fetch with event.request. So as if, as if nothing had happened. Uh, this is async as well. Okay, so that should now allow us to, um, to work offline. So when when this fetcher calls, we'll always be using the cache. So this is definitely not production code. There's a, you know, we we wouldn't always want to pull this cache. We'd want to be, because um, we'd just always get the same page even when it's updated on the server. So there's lots of different kind of recipes in terms of do you pull from the cache and get the uh, latest from the network in the background? Or do you go to the network first? And if there's no network there, go to the cache. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can do this. Um, you know, in production, I wouldn't want to roll my own service worker. I would use something like cert, like Workbox. Uh, again, I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, I've also got a video on that. Um, uh, worth, worth a look here if you're interested in that uh, just there. Um, so, so for now, let's show if, let's see if this actually works. 
So um, if we come back in and we've got the network, if I just do a, let's bring the service worker section up here and we'll do a refresh. Now we can see an interesting point here as well is we've got uh, one service worker called well ID 9753 is activated and running. And now because we've updated, there's a our new one um, is looking to be activated. Normally it won't activate until you close all the browse all the tabs with that application on because it doesn't want to come um, become live. Um, with an old version of the app. It was a nice clean start, but we can override that here just by clicking skip waiting and we should now have this updated service worker in place. Um, so I'll just do another refresh and then let's go um, to the network and turn the network off again and click refresh and no dinosaur. We're still getting our page returned we can refresh this as much as we want. Um, we can even empty the cache and refresh it. And even with no internet at all, we're getting our page. So this is the power of Service Worker. Um, like I said before, I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be doing this yourself. There's lots of gotchas. Uh, Workbox is the way to go. But um, you, you do need to understand, as with all frames and stuff, it's, it's, it's great to understand quite what is going on. So in this case, we're caching the index.html. You can cache your static resources as well. Um, that's certainly worth doing, but the, the big gains um, are in caching the navigation, which is something you, you know, the HTTP cache will cache your JavaScript and your images and your CSS. Um, and so there's not a huge amount to be gained there. It, you know, you do need to cache it to be able to get offline, but in terms of performance and things, the um, caching the navigation in your service worker is the important one. And that's what really gives us the offline because you, you, you can't really put HTTP cache on those, but service worker, as long as you're um, managing it correctly, you can, you can um, put up the cache version to the user. Um, so there you go, a quick overview of service workers. If you like that video, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, we think it was rubbish, and feel free to click that subscribe if you wanna see more of these videos. See you next time, thanks for watching.